in terms of billing a fight, I don't think there's one better on this card. You got the Colombian Warrior versus the Fighting Hawaiian with Danny Chavez versus Kai Kamaka the third and another group of guys who just got a really good name due to the pandemic, right? I think that Kai Kamaka became a really big fan favorite with some of the fights that he was in. You know, to talk about the Tony Kelly fight, for me personally, that was a borderline fight of the year candidate. I thought that he did a phenomenal job of pushing the pace against the guy who truly wanted to keep the fight standing. And then he goes 0-2, right? We're gonna get into those fights in a second, but let's talk about Chavez, right? He fought TJ Brown in his debut, another fighter that Kai Kamaka took on, and I think that he did a phenomenal job in that fight and just utilizing the basics of MMA. A lot of straight punches, the balance was there. And I felt like if you think about the athleticism that he had for all three rounds, it was so impressive. It seemed like his cardio could last for days. He was able to strike with the best of them. And TJ Brown has this ability to just keep fights close. And I think that despite all that, Chavez was able to you know keep his wits about him, control the fight the entire time. It just showed that he had a really great base. But then you look at the, you know, Flash Gordon fight, and that's where I think Kai Kamaki needs to take some notes, right? Because all of a sudden we see him go from this like cardio beast who was able to land in big ways, had such beautiful leg kicks and all these great things. Then he turned into a guy who was getting exploited up against the fence. Then as he started getting tired, Jared Gordon was able to start landing big shots on him, landing takedowns, working ground and pound, just getting control and dominating the fight over three rounds. That was the fight where you kind of saw a humbling experience for Chavez, who took on a guy who just seemed to be better in all the areas, right? And I don't actually think that's true. It's just that Gordon's pressure and forcing him to wrestle got him tired. So finally, we saw a version of Chavez that just got a little sloppy from having to do so much in a fight against a guy like, you know, Flash Gordon. So for Kai Kamaka, let's talk about the Pierce fight, because I think in that fight, you just saw something very specific because, you know, the split loss to TJ Brown, it just, that was a close fight against two guys who, who just give it their all. And it's always, always a fun fight, not much to assess. And I think that Kai Kamaka's flaws as a fighter are pretty obvious when he just goes crazy early in the fight and then has to kind of keep that pace, keep that power, all of that stuff going for another 10 minutes after the first round. That's where he seems to be finding most of his issues. Now, with a guy like Pierce, I thought that was a very fun back and forth fight, right? Both guys were landing pretty big and doing damage, but then Pierce started getting the timing. He started getting the footwork in. So as some of these fighters who get better as the fights go on, some of these guys who, you know, fight with a lot of pace and a lot of power in the first, always tend to fade it. These are the worst styles of, of, of matchups for those guys because as they're getting basically worse, the other guy's getting better and better and, and understanding their opponent a lot more. And even if Kai was understanding Pierce Love where he just didn't have the energy or the ability to do anything about it. And he kind of reminded me of, you know, Puna Soriano in that Brendan Allen fight, exact same take when you think about it. Amazing first round fighters, especially from an exciting standpoint, but then technically they kind of fade and there's a lot to be said for, you know, their opponents exploiting some of those holes. And I think in this fight, you want to talk about keys to victory. Chavez has to basically fight exactly the same way Jared Gordon did in, in, in that fight, right? Because I think that the pace is what's going to really slow down both of these guys. So Kai Kabaka is going to use that wrestling. I mean, he's such a good, powerful striker, but the path to victory for him really has to be setting up takedowns, managing his cardio, not throwing so many of these big power looping shots because over the course of two to three rounds, he might be able to do a lot of damage on Chavez if he just pushes him up against the fence, force him to fight a grinder fight. Because the one thing you can say about Chavez in that TJ Brown fight was when you force him to just do a technical striking battle, he actually is very crisp and scary. The strikes up the middle, the leg kicks, those are the things that Chavez is gonna wanna do for this fight because if he can stay out of that first round power, He's pretty much got a, a, an open arena there to kind of do whatever he needs to to get that win. If Kai does not slow down that pace and doesn't, you know, throw with such reckless abandonment, he's going to be tired for those next few rounds. And that's just where I see that Chavez has had so much success, especially against a guy like TJ Brown, who on the flip side, won a split decision against Kai Kamaka in the exact same fashion. So 
when you think about this fight, it's actually hella close from a game planning perspective because Chavez really needs to be that guy who can manage the cardio all three rounds, but then also push the pace against the guy who needs that done to him. I think that Kai Kamaka's striking game keeps him tired because of how he fights and how much he puts behind things. But we haven't really seen him do, you know, a wrestling style game plan that are set up with these strikes over the course of two, three rounds. And if he's got the cardio to max that out a bit, I think it's a tough fight for Chavez. So I'm really going to be honest in saying that it's tough for me to really pick a side here because if I had watched just the TJ Brown fight and not the Jared Gordon fight, I think Chavez is the easy pick here. But then you think about what kind of pressure Kai Kamaka comes with and how he can look if he chooses to wrestle, manages the pace, and doesn't throw with such reckless abandonment. I think that's his fight to lose. So such a close fight in terms of variables, game plans, all that fun stuff. And so for me, I'm going to lean Danny Chavez as the favorite here only because Flash Gordon is a pretty pristine opponent. If you look at both of these guys' records, that's the toughest opponent either of these guys have faced. So for me, that's where it stands out is if Chavez can go in and do that kind of damage, but also learn, be durable, and take in all of what he did in that fight, it makes him a much tougher opponent for the next guy. And so I'm leaning Danny Chavez. I'm going to go with a line of about minus 150 here. I do think that he's going to get some bump, but minus 140 and minus 150 is what I'd say with Kai coming in as that plus 120 dog. And so, I mean, you know what? I could be wrong. It's an opener, but people are starting to listen to me without even listening to me, right? You got Danny Chavez opening as a plus 125 dog. Now we've seen about a plus 100, plus 105. I mean, Betway basically has him as a favorite here. This fight is going to close as a pick -em. Like I said, it was going to. I just see so few areas where these guys can exploit each other. And it just comes down to good game planning and sticking to the script because there's just so little differentiating the guys. But that pressure from Gordon versus, you know, the fatigue issues that we saw against Pierce that ended the fight for Kai. Those are the things that uh, really stand out to me going into this fight. So I'm really excited for this one. I think it's just going to be a very fun one. And if you're a fight fan, I mean, there's no reason to even lay any money on this one because that one's going to be probably a pretty bloody mess. And my son's name's Kai. And so I always have a soft corner for the Kai Car France and the Kai Kamaka the third. So you know where my heart's going to be. You kind of know where my pick's kind of getting close to. So stay tuned for that in the coming few days. It's going to be great to break all these down.